Hydrogels. Whether you've heard of them or not, they play key roles in many areas of life. From cosmetics and wound dressings to cancer therapeutics and tissue engineering, their versatile properties can be utilised in countless ways. If you wear contact lenses, then you might be looking through an example right now. Let's take a look at how they're formed. It all starts with monomers. These combine to form polymers through either step-by-step -step or chain growth polymerization. Chain growth polymerization involves monomers being added one by one to the end of a growing polymer chain due to the presence of an active site. Step growth polymerization happens when both the polymer and the monomer have active sites, and so any two species can bond together to form polymer chains. Now that we have polymers, imagine stabilizing interactions between individual chains. These interactions linking the polymer chains are called crosslinks and can be either chemical, such as covalent bonds, or physical, such as hydrogen bonding, ionic or hydrophobic interactions. Now hydrogels are simply three-dimensional systems just like these, but with one important distinction. They are hydrophilic and capable of holding large amounts of water between their polymeric chains to form a solid or semi-solid gel. The cross-linking allows the hydrogel to swell in aqueous conditions and maintain its structural integrity instead of dissolving. The phase transition into a gel is permanent for those with chemical linking, but can be reversed if only physical cross-linking took place. Let's look at an example. This is ethylene oxide. It undergoes something called anionic polymerization, which is a chain growth reaction. It starts by a monomer gaining a negative charge to form a nucleophile, creating an anionic molecule with an active site. This step is driven by the ring opening, as it relieves the bond angle strain. This anionic molecule will then go on to react with more monomers in a step called propagation, eventually forming a long chain. Termination of this reaction occurs when the monomer runs out, or more realistically, when the active site reacts with something else, like water. The result of the reaction is polyethylene glycol, or PEG for short. From here, PEG hydrogels can be made by using difunctional monomers to bond two individual chains together. Hydrogels can also come from natural sources, like cellulose, a plant carbohydrate and polymer of glucose, or chitosan, a sugar found in the shells of crustaceans. Synthetic hydrogels tend to have more controllable and reproducible properties, but a move towards green hydrogels could mean a more sustainable future for this technology. One particularly interesting use of their properties is in supporting tissue regeneration in the body. According to NHS statistics, 470 people died last year waiting for a transplant in the UK alone, and at the time of recording, 6,293 people are currently on the waiting list. Situations are significantly worse elsewhere. In the United States of America, 17 people die every day waiting for a transplant, and the waiting list is over 100,000 people long. There are three main types of organ transplant. Allogeneic, from another human, xenogeneic, from another species, and autologous, from one's own tissue. Both allogeneic and xenogeneic risk a response from the patient's immune system, which could damage the transplant, therefore requiring that patients go on immunosuppressant medication. Autologous transplants avoid this, but risk a lack of healthy donor cells in the transplant site. This all spurred the global scientific community to find a safer and more reliable alternative. One possible solution uses hydrogels as scaffolding to both mechanically and chemically support cell growth. So what is it about hydrogels that makes them a suitable material for these tissue engineering applications? Well, they have a high water content, which is good for the diffusion of nutrients, and the gels are very flexible. The cross-linked three-dimensional structure also mirrors the matrix of proteins, sugars, and other biological components that supports all cells. In other words, a hydrogel can mimic the extracellular environment. The gels do, however, have weak mechanical properties and can become deformed. The tissue engineering method can be split into four steps. First, take healthy cells from the patient and grow the sample. Second, place these cells into the precursors for the gel, that is, the polymers in a solution. Third, transfer the solution into a mold and add cross-linking to form a hydrogel. Finally, grow this into a three-dimensional cell culture and transplant it into the patient. During this growth into a cell culture, the hydrogel gradually degrades and is replaced by the natural extracellular matrix. So let's go back and have a look at the PEG hydrogel. PEG itself is non-biodegradable, not a great fit for our needs. Ideally, the scaffolding should have a similar biodegradation rate to that of its surroundings. To achieve this, we react our polymer with lactide to create a block copolymer, which is defined as a linear polymer formed by alternating chain segments with distinct chemical structures. 
By functionalizing PEG with polylactic acid, or PLA, we introduced ester linkages into the hydrogel network, which can be hydrolyzed by the body. The higher the ratio of PLA to PEG, the faster the gel will degrade, and so the hydrogel now has tunable properties. Green hydrogels can also do this. Cellulose on its own is biodurable, and so doesn't break down in the body. Again, the solution is to combine the cellulose with other, more easily degradable polymers. For example, you can cross-link the cellulose with hyaluronic acid, which naturally exists in the body and is degraded by an enzyme found in cells and blood serum. Now, we've produced a hydrogel with enzyme-sensitive degradation. Research has also been done into a less invasive way to deliver the gels into deeper parts of the body. Injectable hydrogels. Cross-linked hydrogels are too solid to be injected via a syringe. It's made possible by injecting a solution of the polymer precursors and then triggering a phase transition to gel once inside the body. One way of physically cross-linking in vivo, meaning in the body, is achieved via attaching hydrophobic groups onto the polymer chains, often in the form of small alkyl groups. The hydrophobic groups on different chains will, when placed in aqueous environments, cluster together to avoid the water. This works with a thermal trigger because hydrophobic interactions are stronger at higher temperatures. The precursor polymers can be stored at room temperature as solutions and then gelate when injected due to the heat of the body. There are also ways to chemically cross-link polymers in vivo, which is seen as somewhat less safe due to the small compounds used for initiation, but is overall expected to produce mechanically stronger hydrogels. One method is just to prepare everything needed to make the hydrogel, but use a double barreled syringe to keep the reactants separate until they enter the body. This method does, however, involve a risk of the reaction taking place within the syringe during the injection. An alternative is free radical polymerization, which is a type of chain growth polymerization. It uses UV radiation to activate initiator molecules by generating radicals through homolytic fission. One of the more well-researched hydrogel systems like this uses modified pegs containing unsaturated carbon double bonds. The free radicals react with the double bond, adding a reactive radical centre to the peg chains. This then goes on to react with other polymer chains in the propagation step. The result is a covalently cross-linked hydrogel. So far, studies are showing injectable hydrogels to have promise in cartilage regeneration and the encapsulation of stem cells. Many more clinical trials will be needed before these hydrogels are used widely in commercial tissue engineering, but hopefully in the future they will provide some much needed relief to a system so reliant on organ donors.